Welcome to the Spine Guide. The Spine Guide is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about one of the most catastrophic things that can happen in your low back, which is cauda equina syndrome. To understand the cauda equina, you have to understand the spinal cord and the nerves in the low back. The spinal cord starts at the brain, it goes all the way through the cervical spine, then the thoracic spine, and the spinal cord actually ends at the L1 level. Most people think the spinal cord goes all the way through and through the spine down to the low back, but it really terminates at L1. As you'll see here, the spinal cord ends at L1 and it sends these strands that come down that look like a horse's tail, or I like to tell patients it looks like strands of spaghetti that come down after L1. And these nerves go through the buttock and down the legs, and we call it cauda equina because cauda is for tail, equina is horse, and somebody thought, well, let's name it cauda equina because it looks like a horse's tail. And in fact, when you look at the microanatomy and the dissection of the cauda equina, you'll see here that it actually does look like these little strands of spaghetti or a horse's tail. Here's an MRI, so there's the belly, there's the back, you'll see bones, which are the building blocks of the spine, the discs are the cushion between the bones, the discs are like jelly donuts, and they act like little shock absorbers. So here you see the spinal cord coming down, and the spinal cord in this patient ends at T12L1. After that, the spinal cord sends these little wisps coming down, again, that look like a horse's tail. And these little strands that look like strands of spaghetti are gray, and they show up around this white stuff, which is spinal fluid. So if you take a cross section, so if we cut this way and lay you flat, you'll see that the cross section of the spinal cord up at around T12 looks solid, and there's a solid cord surrounded by spinal fluid. Here's F4L5 in the same patient, and you'll look at the cross section where you can really see on cross section, it looks like little dots represent the end or cross section of these strands of spaghetti. The spinal cord is part of the central nervous system. It's a continuation of the brain. Spinal cord injury is completely catastrophic. It's almost always irreversible and is a disaster. Now, since the spinal cord ends at L1, technically you can really never get a spinal cord injury in the low back. You can certainly injure a nerve, but you can't really get a spinal cord injury by definition because that cord ended at L1. Of course, you can get back pain, buttock and leg pain, sciatica and weakness from compression of nerves in the low back. And I have lots of videos on that. Uh, which talk about sciatica, but they're never really surgical emergencies. Number one, because unlike the spinal cord, these are just peripheral nerves and peripheral nerves can recover quite well. And number two, it's not a solid structure. So when there's compression, these little strands of nerves, if there's compression, can actually displace themselves and move around the area of compression. So they're actually less susceptible to compression than the spinal cord. Here's a good example of an MRI. You see a disc bulge at L405, you can see here, these little dots, which represent the nerves, are kind of displacing and swimming around the disc bulge. The nerves that control the bowel and bladder also live in the cauda equina, and unlike the nerves that supply the legs, are very, very sensitive and very prone to injury. So cauda equina syndrome is when there are symptoms from compression of the nerves that go down the buttock, the leg, and also that feed the bladder, the bowel, and, and uh, give you sexual function. Cauda equina syndrome is one of the only surgical emergencies that we see in the low back, Patients may have buttock pain, leg pain, a little bit of weakness, as, as painful as it is, it's actually not a surgical emergency. This is really one of the only surgical emergencies aside from major, major trauma. The cause of cauda equina syndrome is almost always a large central disc herniation, and for that reason, it really happens in younger patients, typically in their 40s. So these are the bones here, and again, the bones are sandwiched by discs, and this is like a jelly donut. There's a jelly inside and a hard donut outside, so for example, if I were to take one of these discs out and show you the cross section, and the nerves live right here, what can happen is this green jelly can come out of a defect in the donut layer, which is this yellow part, and then this jelly can hit the nerves of the cauda equina and pinch the entire cauda equina. Other causes of cauda equina syndrome can include um, bone spurs, tumors, and epidural hematoma, which is a collection of blood that's pushing up cauda equina, sometimes complex trauma, but almost always it's from a large disc herniation in a younger patient. The symptoms of cauda equina are extremely variable in the sense that you may only have one or two of these symptoms, and if you do have one of the symptoms, they may not be as severe as presented here, but even if you don't have a symptom that's as severe, it's still a reason to be concerned and you still should have it checked out by a spine doctor. So what are the five symptoms? The first is either one-sided or two-sided buttock and leg pain or sciatica that goes all the way down the leg. Sometimes it's accompanied by leg weakness. Patients may have a foot drop. Number two, saddle anesthesia. So the nerves S2 to S5 give you sensation around 
the anal region, the vagina, the scrotum, that saddle area. So if you have numbness or lack of sensation in that area, that is indicative of Caudaquana syndrome. Third is sexual dysfunction in men, difficulty having an orgasm uh, as well as an erection. And in women, difficulty having an orgasm, uh, sometimes because of numbness in that perivaginal labial area. And fourth is loss of bladder control, which is one of the biggest one is really quite common. So your bladder, of course, fills up with urine and then you're supposed to know that you're gonna empty the bladder and then go to the bathroom. So one variety of bladder dysfunction is the inability to empty your bladder. So even though you're trying to empty, you still have lots of residual urine that's in your bladder and you feel like your bladder is still full. And second is complete loss of bladder control or incontinence where you actually have urine that's in your pants and it's uncontrollable. Last number five is loss of bowel control. Some people will find stool in their pants. They don't even know that they went to the bathroom and that's because of loss of the sphincter tone and the inability to control bowel movements. If you do have any of these symptoms that are concerning for Caudaquina, get to a spine surgeon or get to an ER that same day. When calling for an appointment at a spine surgeon's office, you should use the buzzwords of I'm having bladder control issues, I'm worried about Caudaquina syndrome. That will often get you into the office quite a bit quicker because people know to look out for those buzzwords. Once you get in front of the doctor, there's always a physical exam. So part of that physical exam is gonna be strength testing. Make sure that you have good strength in your legs and your ankles. They'll do sensory testing as well. And unlike a normal spine physical exam, there's almost always a rectal exam because you have to check for rectal tone. And lastly, we'll check if the bladder is functioning correctly. One of the best ways to do that is to do an ultrasound of the bladder to look at a post void residual. So as we talked about, once your bladder fills and you feel like you wanna pee, you pee and there's always a residual amount of volume in the bladder and that's a normal thing. If you have Caudaquina syndrome, you retain lots of urine and you're unable to completely empty your bladder. A post void residual is a non-invasive ultrasound imaging tool that looks like how much is left within your bladder after you go pee. There's a great study that shows that if your post void residual is less than 200 milliliters, so you're emptying your bladder and there's only 200 milliliters left, then the bladder is being emptied appropriately and that there's a 97% chance that you probably don't have Caudaquina syndrome, it can be ruled out. This study actually showed a post void residual was even better than physical exam for diagnosing Caudaquina syndrome. If there are any symptoms of Caudaquina syndrome, the ER or your spine surgeon will get an MRI immediately. The MRI will look at the nerves, look at the discs, et cetera, to see if there is compression of the Caudaquina. Here's an example of one of my patients, he's 39. He initially presented with just buttock and leg pain. So we decided to get an MRI. We weren't that worried about it yet. And then all of a sudden he started having urinary difficulty. He was leaking some urine. And lo and behold, we get an MRI and here's the L405 level. You see there's plenty of room for the cauda equina at the L405 level. But then we look at the cross section L5S1. He has a massive disc herniation, the donut layer tore, the jelly spit out. There's severe compression of the cauda equina. On the cross section you can see there's no spinal fluid there. This entire thing is disc that's filling up the canal and compressing the cauda equina. So of course we took him immediately to surgery to take pressure off of the cauda equina. So hopefully you learned something about what cauda equina syndrome is, what the symptoms are, and if you do have it, you have to get immediately in front of a doctor. At our next episode, we'll talk about the surgical treatment and the outcomes of cauda equina syndrome. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click the like and subscribe button.